recently you kind of talked about James Harden mm -hmm. and, and warned against his parting. We all know like every place he lives, the strip club money go up in every city he's playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And now he's in Philly and you know, me and you had a great conversation, probably our first conversation. We talked a lot about Allen Iverson. Right. That's when I learned, okay, how you understood taking care of players. Mm -hmm. But now on your job with your platform, whether it's KD, Kyrie, James, you've been very vocal about these superstar players. Where is the space in between that of saying, okay, I'm still going to protect these guys. I'm going to hold them accountable, but I'm also going to do my job because I'm as big of a star in my world as they are in theirs. Well, it depends, again, on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, for example, I wasn't getting on James Harden about the strip club. I was getting on him about shooting three for 17 and then going to the strip club. There's a difference. You can't have Kyrie Irving roll up in the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. The brother don't like you. He happy that you're going from the team you just left that he was on, all right? He essentially called you out. You sat up there and act like you didn't give a damn that you were just happy and relieved to be away from him. And y'all collide for the first and time. You. And opening tip off, he waves them off. I got him. And he guards you. You got to respond to that damn challenge. That's, that's a man thing right there. You can't, you can't back down. And to shoot three for 17, now that's bad. That's very, very bad. It's 18%. Yeah. That's, that's very, very bad. Terrible. Okay? And to lose by 29. It's terrible. But to go out and party after that? Nah. But what, what about no, 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 no. There's, there's your job. Mm -hmm. And then there's extracurricular activities, Stephen no, 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 A. No, no. no, there's teachers that do a terrible job and they can go have a good <laughs> right, time. Right. There's police officers that right. don't write no tickets. Right. They go have a, Why, when an athlete mm -hmm. plays bad, mm -hmm. can he not go enjoy his time Well, off? the first order of business is that you got to really want the answer to that question before you ask it, because I'm not sure you want I it. I want it. Teachers don't command an audience of 19,000 plus to pay tickets to walk through a turnstile and watch you perform. Professional yes. athletes do. And so what you have to understand is that, of course, he has the right to do it. Nobody's questioning that. Yeah. I don't mean can't in a literal sense. Figuratively speaking, it's a horrible look. Mm -hmm. And here's the reason why. Because the fans have to know you care as much as they do. That's the key. See, when Allen Iverson was in Philadelphia, ain't nobody partying more than him. Mm -hmm. Here's the difference. Allen Iverson usually performed. Mm -hmm. and the brother had a heart of a lion. And we saw this miniature dude going into the land of giants and challenge, challenging them every single night. Show out. James Harden is bigger. James Harden is stronger. He's a four-time league scoring champion. He's a former league MVP who got called out by another superstar in the league who called him washed up, then showed up in your house and said, essentially, I'm going to bust your ass. Yeah. And then did it. Mm -hmm. When that happens to you and you go out partying, the fans ain't going to love you that much no more. And what I was saying to James Harden was, I'm not holding it against you. Please understand you're less than a week removed from saying, I love Philadelphia. It's my kind of town. It feels like home. I was saying to him, that ain't going to last. If you play like that and you partying. So it was a warning to him from someone who knows Philly. Yeah. If he was in Utah, I might not have said that. Ain't nowhere to party in Utah nobody, after the game. Uh, okay. It's some, it's okay. Some, it's some strip club. I, I'm just saying, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know, but what yeah, I'm saying yeah. is, I'm just saying, li listen, you, can, that's going to be a problem for you. And if you don't believe me, Ask Allen Iverson. Ask him. He'll tell you. He'll look at you and he'll say, Stephen A has a point. Stephen A absolutely right. Because I know that town. Yeah. And I'm telling him, I'm not asking you. Let that brother play like that again. God help him if it's during the playoffs. It's a different ball game. Now with the Kyrie situation, totally different. People have the right to feel how they want about the vaccine. Tens of millions of people had to take the vaccine. I was one of those people. Walt Disney was like, oh, Stephen A, we need to take the vaccine. Now, I was going to take it anyway. But I was nervous as hell about it. 
was reluctant about it. So I understand his reluctance. That's not my issue with Kyrie Irving. My issue with Kyrie Irving is that Kyrie Irving finds every excuse under the sun not to show up for work. The brother's gone for 10 months. He gets injured in February. The season gets halted in March because of the pandemic. Then after that, they resume play in the bubble. Kyrie is a vice president on the committee discouraging players from playing in the bubble, knowing that the league owners had this provision called the force majeure provision that would have allowed them to rip up the collective bargaining agreement, thereby rendering all contracts null and void. He knew that and was still encouraging them to do it, which was ignorant. Then on top of it all, he did it without talking with the president of the Players Association at the time, which was Chris Paul. We fast forward, bubble play takes place, Lakers win the chip, they go to play in December. That's 10 months off, 10. Season starts December 22nd. Two weeks later, Kyrie needs time off. <laughs> Why? Because the riots took place at the US Capitol and he's traumatized. Are you kidding me? Have y'all lost y'all mind? You got to be kidding me. He's traumatized because of the US riots. Yeah. When the riot at the Barclays Center, when the riot in New York City, you understand what I'm saying? They, they, there was a riot at the US Capitol, okay? What the hell is next? The Palestinians bombed the Israelis and you gonna take time off because of that? He was hurt. You know, I mean, really? He's hurt. You understand what I'm saying? The war in Afghanistan, I mean, Al Qaeda comes out of nowhere. That's gonna be a reason? Ukraine, we ain't joking about this stuff. Ukraine, I, I swear to you, my hand, uh, my hand on the Bible. When Ukraine got bombed by Russia, I thought Kyrie was gonna take off for that. Oh. I ain't lying. I thought he was gonna take off for that. I sat up there, I went on first take, I went like this. I wanna see if he's gonna take off. I, I wanna see if he's gonna take off. That's exactly what I did. I wanted to see because there's always an excuse. And I'm saying, this brother is a superstar. He's box office. And the city of Brooklyn, the borough of Brooklyn, doesn't even get to watch him play. Now, he can say it's because of the mandate, which is partially true, but the other side to that is you elect not to take it. You left your brother KD hanging. KD don't seem to mind. I don't understand why. That's a separate story. But you see the difference? Harden is a different issue than Kyrie. The, the, the issue determines how I feel about it on a case-by-case -case basis. Hold up. Limitless. Take a simic guy pinning it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, when I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on a mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a simic guy pinning it. I father here.